wait a few minutes while um, you know some more people join us and we hear where people are coming from and then I'll uh, introduce this wonderful panel and uh, we'll get on with the uh, with the webinar. So does anyone want to let us know where they're coming, where they're streaming in from tonight? We're very shy there. Uh, well, let's start with our panel. Nietzsche, you're, uh, you're, you're in the book. Yes, I can hear you. What shall I say? Shall I say who I am? <laughs> well, are you, you just where, you, where, where are you tonight? Are you, you, are you in New York? I am in New York. I am one of the founders of the Writers Lab. Uh, and the Writers Lab is, if anyone is wondering, it is a screenwriting competition and intensive and incubation for uh, women writers over 40. Uh, so that's what the Writers Lab is. Uh, and it has been around for eight going on nine years. We are all over the place. We're in New York and the United States. We're in Europe. We're in UK and Ireland. And, uh, and, we, um, and we're ready to take over the world. <laughs> Growing and expanding beautifully all over the world. Wonderful. Well, wonderful to have you, Nietzsche. And Thank Elizabeth, so too, happy to be here. From lab. Where are you? Where are you today? Are you also in New York? I am. I am Nietzsche's uh, partner in crime in this <laughs> in the um, execution of the Writers Lab. Um, and I am also based in New York, although I'm well, just a little further north in that constellation of of um, boroughs in the Bronx. And um, I'm very excited to be here. Uh, we have been partnering with Roadmap Writers to support um, screenwriting and screenwriters and craft development and industry knowledge for, I'm not sure how many years, but I think it's been at least five or six. Yeah, I think so. Um, maybe. And we've been partnering with um, Film Market Hub um, since they began reaching out from their um, uh, base in Barcelona is the base, correct? Um, and that's been at least three or four years. And so I'm very excited to be um, here on the webinar with the with our two fantastic partners. Well, we are just thrilled to have you. So um, yeah, thank you. And um, I'm before we jump on to um, just introduce when I, I want to hear from Joey and Adib who are the found who work for Roadmap Writers, who are incredible at what they do. So Joey, can we can we have an intro from you? Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, first, let me, like the Writer's Lab, we're talking Meryl Streep, we're talking yeah. Napoleon, and we're talking yeah. Kate Blanchett. They just bury the lead. <laughs> yeah. Like a superstar um, actors are involved and so supportive of really championing um, women writers over a certain age. And I think it's, so awesome. I, I don't, I've never seen a company work as hard for a, such a select group of writers and the writers that we've worked with from the Writers Lab have just been so nice, so lovely, talented, supportive, normal, which is very important. Oh, yeah. Uh, normal. Um, but yeah, so I'm Joey. I'm the CEO of Roadmap Writers. This tank top is no reflection on how I feel about this panel. I am very sunburned, so that's why I'm wearing this. Um, but Roadmap Writers is um, a company for um, writers who want to develop their craft, want to meet executives. We also help champion writers that we feel are ready. We just had our 271st writer signed through our introductions. I just found out yesterday that three of those writers are now staffed on the same series for Amazon. What? Really? So yeah, it was so weird. I just found out yesterday. I was like, really? How's that? Um, right. And uh, yeah, so for us, we're just always helping to kind of mine fresh voices and get them in front of execs. Incredible. Nice. What do I add? Um, Joey made me work for him because I was <laughs> between writing gigs. <clears throat> and uh, so he said, you're going to come do marketing for me. And I said, okay. And then I saw my title as director. And I was like, I thought I was going to be like an assistant or a coordinator. <laughs> so uh, that's Joey's way of promoting you without knowing it. <laughs> uh, I'm a deep, I'm a television writer. I run the LA TV Writers Facebook group on top of all the other things. Uh, we have 17,000 members, many of whom are uh, all about TWL. And, and um, so they, they ask me about it constantly. I'm like, yes, they're good. They're one of the good ones. Like, don't worry, they're fine. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm a television writer and I've written on some shows and hopefully I'll get to write on some more coming up. And I have a show in development in the UK. Uh, yeah. So we can talk UK if you want. Oh my, by the way, yeah. 
more modesty. We're talking the Goldbergs. We're talking Netflix. We're talking like all the amazing things that Deep has worked on. You are so, I love it. I, I specifically wanted a Deep mostly because I half love him and half in fear of him. I always say that he could like destroy somebody like this. Because he, so many writers turn to him for advice. Um, and it's great. I mean, working in the industry for as long as you have a Deep, like a Deep knows the good people like TWL and uh, Rosalind, your company, to a Market Hub. So writers, if you ever have any questions and want filterless advice, turn to Mr. Deep. Yes, but not... Don't slip into my DMs like all the time. <laughs> you should see. I mean, I'm sure you guys get it too, but it's just like, hey, yeah. will you read my bio? Will you and it's like, it's fine, but there's so many opportunities to have like a class or like a webinar or something like this. And you can learn actually a lot more and get more uh, opinions. So it's just my opinion. And not scare people. Yeah, not scare people because I do scare them a lot. <laughs> Awesome. We are in. We are so so um, privileged Dick, to have all you guys together um, in one panel tonight. And thank you for coming and showing your support and sharing your brilliant knowledge um, to all our viewers. Um, this is a very warm welcome to tonight's webinar, which the title is "How to Pitch Like a Pro to the U.S. Industry." Um, I'm Rosalind. I'm the UK manager for Film Market Hub. I'm also an emerging screenwriter. And um, this webinar is particularly relevant to Film Market Hub's current event, which is our first US online pitch box, which is still open for submissions until the 17th of August. So I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that at the end of this. And just before we kind of kick off with the questions and to glean as much knowledge as we can from these amazing people all in the same panel in one go, um, I'll just give you a quick intro into Film Market Hub for those who are watching and thinking, what is Film Market Hub? Well, we are the online marketplace for scripted film and television projects in development. Um, we match unproduced projects uh, online through our marketplace, which is 24-7 open. And we match projects with producers, development execs, sales agents, and distributors. We also run, um, like these guys, a bunch of calls and exciting writing contests and showcases um, where we also connect you to the industry. And our most famous um, event is our online pitch box, which we've done in over 30 countries. Um, we've been on 30 events all over the world. Um, and yeah, more of that later. But that's just a little bit about the platform and what we do. Um, so let's look at if, if we could start by looking, talking a little bit about script and knowing your story and how to present it. Um, perhaps I could ask um, Nietzsche. Um, and Elizabeth, firstly, how do we how do we talk about story, and how can we clearly and concisely articulate um, the main thrust that will engage and resonate with the listener, the what, the who, the why of the project? Could you talk to us a bit about that, and how you how you kind of mentor your writers on the lab with that? So, what I want to make sure that Elizabeth and I do is that as we talk, I want to make sure that we keep it directly related to pitching um, and why whatever we say is relevant to pitching. Um, and, and you sort of did it well, Rosalind, because the fact is you really need to know your story. I mean, let's face it, you need to know your story before you write it. That's what I think. I mean, you really need to know the who, why, where, what, what it's about, why you, all that stuff before, I believe, you put pen to paper, um, which is shows you how old I am. Yes, Elizabeth, you need to cut in. I just, I, I think you both rushed through that very important sequence and I wanna make it clear. I think Nietzsche and I talk a lot with our writers about knowing the who, who is your story about? The what, what is your story? And the why, why are you writing it? Why would an audience wanna watch it? Why is this, would this film or television show be made now. The who, the what, and the why. Um, 
that in the, is the essence of the pitch of your project. Um, I think Joey, because I know him a little bit in these in in this pitching world, um, is going to talk a little bit about who you are and how to pitch yourself. I'm just guessing, Joey. Um, but before we get to that, the essence of your story is who's it about, what is it, and why are you telling it? Why do we care? Okay, sorry, Nils. But I want to say one more thing. I just I, this is. I know this is you and me, but the, the thing I want to say is that also, um, you know, it's pitching is not one size fits all, right? So there has to be as a writer and as a business person, you kind of should have, one would hope, gobs and gobs of self knowledge. Like, who are you, and how do you communicate, and what do you need to work on, and what comes naturally? Like, I think that a lot of people get scared of pitching because they think it has to be a certain way, um, and. And it is nice if you can sort of like actually talk about things and have some eye contact and have some volume and, you know, have some personality. But you just also sort of start from a place of, you know, what, what works for me? How do I make this work well? Right. So that's it's not just knowing your story, but it's also knowing yourself. Just wanted to get that in there. That's so good, because if your strength is in a certain place. You, you want to lean into those straights in your pitch and sort of avoid, you know, if you suck at improv, then don't put any improv and, you know, segments of improv in your uh, pitch. So that's really, really good. Uh, yeah, I mean, kind of going up what Elizabeth was saying that I've been working with writers for a little over 10 years and there's been such a shift in the spotlight being now more on the writer than ever before. And the why is probably the most important W out of the W's. Why are you the perfect person to write this? What's your point of view? What are you trying to say with your stories? I feel like the days of everybody looking for the next Fast and the Furious or whatever, the next Four Quadrant film is not necessarily over, but it's more on who the writer is and what they bring to the table and different points of views we haven't seen before. So I personally feel like the why should always be first. Why are you writing this? Um, why can you write this and maybe other people can't? It will just instantly help you stand out. Yeah, you can never go wrong starting with your personal connection to the story and the material, and then they can't take it away from you. You know, they're like, we can't do it without Nietzsche, you know. Yeah, that's, that's my little trick. Yeah, exactly. By the way, I just went to the comments and I saw Jim Worst. Hi, Jim. Nice to see you. I recognize your name. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I had to do I had to do that. Uh, but yeah, I love that. I, I also think that you know, our by the time we get our hands on writers, we've already done so much vetting that you know we we have worked very hard to find a story that jumps out at us and a, mm. a writer that we feel is normal and you know just we just we've like it's it's we've thought so deeply about why we we choose someone to to join this community um and uh it, it's always because that why is really clear mm. you know mm -hmm. why now why this you can feel it you can feel it in the writing that the writer just belongs in this story, you know, that mm. they know their story. Mm -hmm. So, so um, I can see we've got on a mate, we've got people come from LA, Barcelona, Brooklyn, Santa Monica, fantastic, so great to see. Okay, cool. So um, how do you know when your script is ready to be presented to the industry? I think that's a really, it's, it's, we ask it a lot, but I'd love to hear from you guys. How great, do you know great question. Are you kidding <laughs> me? She did. You want me to answer that? <laughs> yeah. uh, okay. <laughs> well, you know what is really hard? Um, it's really hard to be to be sure, to be confident that your script is ready. Um, if you've been through some programs where you're working with um, mentors or development execs who tell you your script is ready, that's helpful. If you don't have that luxury because they are hard, the, those opportunities are hard to come by, um, it's really important we tell all of our writers always, always, always have some kind of community, whether it's a writing partner or a writing group or just a trusted friend who you think is a good reader. And, um, and, and talk it through. I, I will give you a couple of other really specific things. First of all, if you're going to if you're going to be actually sending a script to a professional in the industry who's going to read it, please, please, please proofread excessively. 
I'm not, because honestly, chances are you're going to get one read from that person and only one. And if that person finds typos or can't follow it, you're done. Mm -hmm. So proofreading it, I mean, just on the surface, absolutely critical, but critical. Don't skip it. But secondly, then there's that like who, what, why, when, and where. Um, I think that Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to kick this back and forth with Nita, with Nita a little bit because we talk about different aspects of what makes a script really ready, what makes a script lift off the page for a reader. Um, and I'll throw out a few things, but I know she's got a lot more she's going to run with and she's also going to correct everything. <laughs> so here we go. Number 1. You got to know your world. What world is this set in and is it set up on the page? clearly are there some really clear let's say visual details is there a clear you know time date time period era is there a clear physical world if it's sci-fi or fantasy or something that is not so realistic are have you laid out pretty clear and consistent rules of that world so that the reader who is not inside your head can understand it have you introduced each one of your characters very clearly? Like, oh, it's a middle-aged woman with a, an Israeli name and a flop of salt and pepper hair and green glasses. Oh my God, it's so clear who that is, right? Have you clearly introduced each of your characters and not just in the slug lines, but like thought about what the first words out of their mouths should be. Okay, first um, interruption or second interruption. Sorry, or third interruption. No, no, no. And remember, yeah. remember, this is all relevant for pitching too. Remember, mm -hmm. this is all relevant for pitching too. Because- Your script will, yes, sorry. Right? Just making the connection. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it has to be clear on the page and in what you say, and they have to match. I just had a revelation because in a way, that first page, like the way you approach, and this isn't like perfect, a perfect equation, but in a way, the way you approach a first page with that, that it, that's sort of how you have to think of a pitch. You don't have much time to right. grab somebody. Right. So make it clear. Yeah. Who, what, yeah, and why, make it where, clear where, where. on page one. How you open your story says a lot about what your story is going to be and tells us whether or not we want to read to page two. You have to be able to understand what the story is. And also this thing about when is your script ready? It's so crazy. It's like, it's so, it's so, um, it's so film, you know, the whole thing, um, hurry up and wait, mm -hmm. you know, that whole thing of you work your, you should work your ass off, like draft after draft and do your research and oh my God, deep dives into bios and do all that stuff. And then know that your script is never done, mm -hmm. right? It's that, that crazy, you have to be able to live in the irony of it. You know, you work hard, make it really sharp and good and clear and, and, and full of meaning and full of movement and pace and all that. And, and, well then, and, then, words. and then, right. And then, and then it, it will be done ish, but that's okay. <laughs> when it's done ish, yeah. then you present it because you've worked hard. Um, and then someone will say, how about if you do that to it? So this whole idea of done is you have to always live with that sense of like, yeah, it's never done. Cause you can get a note that makes your script go from a nine to a 10, you know? And then you're like, well, I'm willing to apply this note because it's gonna make this thing so bulletproof that I have confidence that anytime it goes out that it's a good representation of me as a writer. But it's hard to get to that point. You have to do a lot more drafts than people think. Um, even even for something that's like a 30 minute comedy or it's like 50 drafts, you know, 60 drafts because you have to, punch up all the jokes every single time and cut um, out all the excess and all the excess well, yeah those first pages have can have so much bloat on them and it's like what do you guys tell your your people about that about how that should lay out it's this whole thing of you know loving your voice as a writer and and just sort of get you know you have to really um 
you have to just definitely kill your darlings. You have to know. And you can't even tell. That's the tricky part. That's why you need a community. You mm -hmm. don't even know. You, you, you're, so, you're so into you know, some scene. And you're just, you keep working on the scene and working on the scene. And then someone says, why is that scene even there? And you're like, oh, oh my God, <laughs> you just shot me. Um, but you have to have, that. again, it's that living in that sort of, that, that constant state of, I love this. Goodbye. I love this. Goodbye. Uh -huh. It's, uh, you know, it's like, and how do we equate that to pitching? Come on, t bring it back. Okay, well, okay. Right. Because you have, here's how you equate it to pitching. And then I want to circle back to Adib's uh, question, which is almost got lost, but is a really good one. What does that look like on the page? Um, mm -hmm. the, uh, the question really is that um, you can find a great word, a great sentence, a great line of dialogue, even a great character who, who just like brings it all to life for you, um, but might not actually be necessary or even helpful or, uh, to your, to, to the actual, the best telling of your story. Um, and recognizing that and then cutting it is really hard. Mm -hmm. um, it does help to have good readers. Um, but that is, and this is going to lead me back to Adib's point. Um, that is in a way the essence of pitching. Like what is the most essential point that you can make first of all chances are it's some personal story whether yours or your characters it's something very specific and personal but here's the key it's something so specific and personal that the person you're speaking to who might be worlds away from you or from your character gets this moment of recognition oh yeah i have that too whether it's about an insecurity or a fear or a, an anger or a love or a, a laugh or a whatever, um, understanding the essence of your story as it will be compelling to others, as they will understand the story, as they will be interested in the story. It's so hard, but that is what you're going for. And when you look at that first page or first 10 pages or hopefully every page of your script, And I'm, I'm going to hand this back to Nitsa, who does it better than I do, but, and, and I don't want to scare anybody, um, but <laughs> <laughs> excess words are not good. Very well chosen, precise words. That's what you want. Because truthfully, a reader of screenplays um, does not expect to read a novel or a stage play. So every word on the page, Nita likes to talk about white space on the page. The white space is all, almost as, if not as important as the words themselves. Mm -hmm. Because it aids your reader in visualizing what you've laid out. Give mm -hmm. them a line of what they're seeing. Don't cram it all into one paragraph. Take a break before you give them the line of what they're seeing next. Um, don't cram in the next, you know, a, a, a monologue into a paragraph unless it really is a monologue. Break it up. Um, that it's 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 similar to pitching. You want to give your your listener and your reader have not been in your head with this story for the months or years that it's been there. They're coming to it for the first time, and it's like. Okay, so writing, we all know writing a screenplay, a creative act is very much like, dare I say, giving birth. I'm um, sorry, cliche. Um, hold on, again, I'm making a point. I've got a point here. The point is, you can't, like, when you take a, a little kid, a baby or a toddler, out into the snow the first time, those of you who live where there's snow, um, they haven't seen it before, right? So it's not like, woohoo, go play in the snow. They're like, what the what heck is this? Is this? Yeah. Let them check out a snowflake and then let them step in it and then let them feel it. And then you have to sort of give it to your reader and your um, audience, I think, in bite sized, digestible, comprehensible uh, bits. Okay, I'll shut up now. Oh, I love that. And I feel like too, like, I mean, that was amazing. That was just like a- No, I, I was taking notes the whole time. Or like two minutes. But like, I feel like, because especially at Roadmap, we do so much in like marketing writers, the term done is is kind of loose because sometimes writers will rush through a script. Like it's done, it's done, it's done, send it out. And then you read it, you're like, oh my God, this is not close to <laughs> at all. Or a writer, the opposite, where they're really talented and the script is good, but they feel like, 
they have to get more notes because they got a note from this person. They have to do mm -hmm. it again. And then they got a note mm -hmm. from this person. So it's really about trusting your gut and taking the ego out of it and knowing when you feel like it's done. Because if you give it to somebody, if you give it to me, I might have a note that completely conflicts with Elizabeth, that completely conflicts with the deep, you know, so on and so forth, um, because it's different points of views. Um, you're not going to have everybody read the script and have the same exact positive and negatives about your script, most likely. So it's about getting the notes and sit on it and digest it and be like, do I agree with these notes? Taking the ego out of it. Do I think these notes have weight? Um, and it's really just about, and I think the more you do it and the more, maybe traction you get with certain scripts will be will be helpful for you to start trusting your own gut and be like, okay, I say it's done. And maybe the person, the production company that picks it up will have notes and then I'll take those notes. But there has to be a moment where you're like, okay, I'm not going to get any more notes for the time being because I'm saying it's done. This draft is at least done. Yeah, it that's a hard place it's to, hard. it's very hard. I think that I we all struggle with that. I mean, I tell a lot of writers like, well, it's not really done until you're watching it. And mm -hmm. then when they release the director's cut, you know, then it's undone and redone. <laughs> so like it's never, ever, ever, ever done, you know. Yeah. And and so once you understand that, it's like, all right, there's going to just be it's a process. And I'm going to get to the point where I'm OK with it, that it can get sent out. But like if you attach Meryl Streep to your script, she's going to have notes and you're going to rewrite the fuck out of that. So like uh, you're, there's another draft, you know, and then uh, a director and then a, or a producer, like you're just going to keep working on them. But what you don't want to do is overwork them and take too many notes from too many people and then cut too deep because then you end up kind of ruining what made it special because you sort of ground it down to like the mid middle and it's like no longer popping and then you lose your voice you, you lose your voice point of views now you're yeah. getting too many points of view so you have to yeah. keep your point of view i yeah. just want to sort of make a, a note of comfort here the fact is just learn your craft you know i mean there's so many ways get books go visit these kind you know there are so many places you can go and get you know and learn for free but know your craft know what genre you're writing and what what that would might require you know even though we don't all want to write in formula well, that's another discussion altogether formula <laughs> but um but you know just know your craft and know it well and know what's you know what you need to to, to have to have a mm -hmm. good script so that is uh, can give you some comfort for those of you who are like me with a little ocd and you're like okay how do i do this right that's one right. thing you can do right, right. yeah, yeah. Well, that was a, a really deep and rich on so many levels. Um, voice, confidence, um, knowing your characters, knowing your knowing when it's right to release it. Um, so I think we 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 we're going to move slightly onto the pitching now, if that's okay, because I think you you guys covered almost all the questions I had on script in that one go so let's let's have a look at the actual art of pitching now and i know that story is going to come into this again because it will um but can we actually sorry there's one more question that we we did touch on a little bit and i think both joey and nietzsche and elizabeth touched on it but looking um at the market today how important is the relationship between the writer and the story they've written um, and why that person is writing it. I know you touched on it, but like, is, is for example, like how, how connected to that story do we have to, do they, does the writer personally have to be? Is it, is it, if you don't have experience of that world, is it, is it sort of, you know, is that, is that still okay to be writing something you don't have experience of? Because maybe some people, may feel now that they they can't write whatever they want because there is this kind of it has to be very much a kind of personal relationship with stories so or 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 is it that as long as you've done your research and you have a personal you connect with it emotionally and you're passionate about it is that okay um so okay so i'm gonna make this very fast because mm -hmm. i really want um the roadmap dudes to get a chance to talk about that mm -hmm. I, I will say this it, it, it's not binary there is a spectrum of, there's, a, there's many answers to that question. Mm -hmm. But I will say this, there's no right or wrong. Um, I, I do think that it is very important that you have a connection to your story. I do think research and respect of the subject matter, if you haven't 
if it's not your own lived experience is absolutely required. Um, I also think on the other side, there are people who write stories about their childhood. They'll write something, they'll write a bio, you know, an autobiographical movie about their childhood. And no one gives a fur, right? Yeah. Nobody. I mean, what is the movie? Licorice, whatever, licorice pizza. pizza. Like, I don't know. A lot, a lot of people loved it. I just didn't give a, hmm, you know, <laughs> um, it, you know, the guy's an auteur. Okay, great. N not all of us can be auteurs and write the obscure and boring movies and get them made about our childhoods. So be careful. You're, you're, yes, you're very close to the subject matter, but it might be a big, who cares? Right. Does that make sense that I sort of covered that spectrum? Right. And it's different if you're making it versus you're writing it to get it set up somewhere or sell it or as a staffing sample, right? There's a sort of different, the auteur thing is like its own kind of world, right? Yeah. Like and no I, one's going to tell Darren Aronofsky, like, you can't do this, this weird mother movie, right? It's like, I'm just going to do it, but my girlfriend and we're going to just blow it out. And it's like, all right. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't know if Lady Bird would have been made if it wasn't oh. for Greta Gerwig. You know what oh, I mean? No. Like, no I feel one... like you have to have some kind of cinematic yeah. feel to it. Um, so, like, to Denise's point, you don't want it to be a memoir, um, but you want to make sure that it's cinematic, but you're putting your, yourself into it. And I feel like what execs are looking for is something familiar, but shown through a different lens. I feel like that's the only thing I'm saying over and over again, but <laughs> I think mean, it's, like, important. Um, and if you are kind of reaching, I feel like sometimes writers look too far out for inspiration. And if you do Ooh. that, you're going to start writing what other people are writing. And then Ooh. you're going to be kind of mixed in with them. Um, but if you kind of look closer to you and make sure that it's not a memoir, but something that you have experienced or a, a version of a story that you like was shown through a different perspective, um, not that many people will be able to write that. So you instantly stand out. I'm a big believer in typecasting yourself at the beginning. Be known for one thing at the beginning. Don't be like, well, I don't want to be pigeonholed into one thing yes you do at the beginning you should and then after that if you you've proven yourself you could kind of branch off and write other things um but be known for something at the beginning so people turn to you for that for that project or whatever um i also want to say one more thing about the elephant in the room it is my opinion and joey and adib can probably speak better to this that today especially like right now in this moment this zeitgeist um it is really about who you are and your personal close experience of this story, these characters, what you want to say. In my personal opinion, that very personal, not speaking for the Writers Lab, that is a shame because the act of writers, writers are creative, you know, geniuses and 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 you should be able to invent you should be able to imagine you should be able to wear different lenses and see the world in different ways and and through different characters eyes and of course most of you can um but the industry is not that interested in some lens you can put on if they can go find that person to tell that story at least right at this moment so to Nietzsche's point and to joey's point if it is not your actual personal lived experience, you have to find some other pretty direct connection to pitch that story in the mm. industry at this moment, I think. Yeah, it is pretty extreme right now. Like there was somebody yeah. pitching like a story about drag queens and the exec said, well, are you a drag queen? And it was like, I get to the a point that you have to like live in those shoes, um, those stilettos, I guess, for lack of <laughs> no pun intended, but, <laughs> is, um, but also it's true, like you, then you we kind of are kind of catering to just writing memoirs and just kind yep. of writing exactly what we know. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's, it's a fine line for sure. It's tricky. I, um, from my perspective as a person of color, I see a lot of, let's just say white, old white dudes who are like writing some story about a black trans kid uh, from the Bronx. And it's like, where the fuck are you in this thing? And like, Oh, well, it's really hot right now. And I was like, please leave this zoom. It's uh, like, it happens all the time. It's like they pitch these stories and it's like, why do I care about this? Like I would, it's a good idea, but I don't need you now. I'll just take that and give it to someone who has a name and you're done. Cause there's no personal connection. There's no emotional stakes for you to tell this story. And, but then as people of color, we're always, we can only pitch stories from like our, racial trauma like that's what we end up getting funneled into and it's like 
we can tell other stories. We do. Uh, we're not just like oh, I'm Indian and just like walk around like listening to Indian music all day like Miss Marvel. Uh, it's uh, it's we're we're multifaceted people and we can write multifaceted stories and different things and you know the industry is just very reactive like you guys have been talking about and uh, reactionary. Hey, I got to throw this in there. Think about, you know, what women have been dealing with. Like yeah. it's always men writing women and it's either, yeah. you know, Madonna or a whore. You're either the yeah. wife who has four lines or the prostitute who has four lines. So, right. I mean, yeah. sorry, sex worker. Sorry. Right. Yeah. The, the culture changes so fast. I know it really does. <laughs> but I think like yeah. going back to pitching is like, you should start a pitch with, with an ease in. And your, your ease in should be a little anecdote about why you're the perfect person to write this without actually saying I'm the perfect person to write this because X, Y, Z. But start with a little bit. Growing up gay in upstate New York, I felt a certain kind of way. And going to a traditional Catholic school, um, I experienced this, which, which really inspired me to write this character. Um, and then go into the pitch. It helps the executive know, regardless of the, the background or anything, why this person speaks on a universal truth to these characters. And you're starting with a story. Mm -hmm. yep. You can never go wrong in a pitch by telling a story. Like it's the whole, it's the gig, but like you give them the, that little taste at the beginning. And I think it's a lot of like, like we're talking about with the first page, it's like you're, you're sort of easing them into the you of it all and your voice. And um, yep. then they become accustomed to like your rhythms and, and, and mannerisms, those things so that they go away and they're hearing well, what you're saying. If you start with a personal story, they start to see you as a storyteller, which yeah. is very helpful in building that, um, in laying the foundation for them to hear your pitch. Yeah. And I would even go so far as to say, not necessarily in that first ease in anecdote, but but um, if you can bring in elements of the genre that you want to pitch. So if you're writing a comedy, God, please make sure you're funny. <laughs> If you're if you're writing a fantasy or a sci-fi or a horror, you have to have some like you know reference points that allow them to feel that you could actually create those worlds for them. If you're writing a drama, you know, bring some heart, make them cry. That's why I really love the writer. I'm not. This isn't just a plug for the for the writers lab, but the, one of the reasons why I really love the writers from the writers lab is because it's a very specific group that the industry often turns their back on or has turned their back on. There's there's always an interesting story from the writer on why they wrote this. And there's there's so much heart to it. You can't turn away because you're like, wow, there is so much emotion around why this person wrote this that even before reading the script, you know, if anything, there's going to be so much heart to the script and to this character because the writer has so much heart about why they're pitching the story. So, yeah, having that connection at the beginning is, is important. Isn't that authenticity? And that's just what we all want. Yeah. It's like, how do I know if you're the person to tell this story? If I feel like you're the person who should tell the story, like because you have proven to me by showing me who you are and how you talk, like that this is your world and you, you own this world and you, you know everything about it and your heart is like in that world. And um, anything short of that for me, I'm not, it's not even worth working on for me. Like if I don't have that, soul connection i'm not going to even work on it we had a and, we had a webinar a while ago with nick pepper who's a, who was like the head of legendary T, uh legendary legend or lions i forgot i think legendary tv and then he's now at amazon he said something that is so true and common sense but the way he said it is much better than i'm about to say it especially for pitching tv when you're in a room they have to feel so much confidence from you to understand this world that they're going to invest millions of dollars into you so you have to know this world inside and out so you have to have lived it you have to experience it you have to be obsessed with it you have to, if you're going to pitch a marvel -esque story you have to be obsessed with marvel you have to be obsessed with those worlds otherwise they're not going to feel the confidence that you're going to be the sun that everybody's going to orbit around so it's really coming in with that confidence and if you know the world inside and out then you should have that confidence that's what I was going to add, add. You know, a lot for a lot of people, a lot of writers, they don't have this natural public confidence. But mm. I always say knowledge is power. It is. Know your story. Know why it means something to you. And just what Joey said, that will give you the confidence. Yes, that's 100%. And practicing. True. Yeah, practicing a little. Yeah, that too. Take improv classes. Uh, I, acting classes and improv are 
probably the best thing you can do to get become a better pitcher. By the way, I just want to say too, as somebody who's not a writer, for me to say have confidence, but if I was in a room with like <laughs> seven Netflix execs looking at me, the amount of urine that would leave my body <laughs> would be unparalleled. So it's a little hypocritical for me to be like, have confidence, have throw a couple of jokes in there at the beginning. Um, but yeah, it is about the confidence. It's also about expectations. When you're pitching, it shouldn't be like, oh, this is it. This is how I'm going to quit my day job and this is going to make me millions of dollars. Oh, yeah. The expectation needs to be like, most likely they're not going to pick up the script because their slate is full or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. But what I want to do is build a relationship. I yeah. want to go, and this is my calling card to get into the room. Um, but the expectation isn't, okay, this is going to make or break me because obviously you're going to have a nervous breakdown if that's your expectation. Oh, yeah. It would be, I just want these people to remember me. I want these people to go, oh, that person was really cool. This person had a cool, interesting idea for a story. There's this other project we're working on. Maybe they could work on that or we'll bring them back later. Yeah. So that should be the expectation so you don't give yourself a nervous breakdown. And you you hear this all the time and 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 uh Writers Lab, you guys tell me if you hear this too, but it's like you're trying to build fans around the industry. And that's what these meetings really are for. And it's like, oh, I loved I love Nisa. She's so cool. We can't do her project, but I but we're we option this book. She might be the person for this. Like that's the that's the move, right? I, I want to add something. But I'm sorry, I might have a little background noise here. Um, the, um, so important uh, what 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 these guys just said. Um, on the one hand, you want to practice that pitch so you know it cold, so you know every every element of it, and you're and you have that confidence that needs is talking about when you talk about the world, when you talk about the character, you know it, you know what to say about it. Um, but the other thing is. That it's true, nine out of ten, or ninety-nine out of a hundred, or whatever um, of these pitches will go nowhere, zero, nothing. Yeah. Except, um, it is an every one of them is an opportunity to build a relationship mm -hmm. that might evolve in any number of ways. Mm -hmm. And so, in a, if you go in with that like memorized pitch, consuming your whole head. You're going to miss what is, I think, in some ways, the most important part of the meeting, which is connecting with a person or people in the room. Mm -hmm. um, and here's where, like, if you, for me, this is helpful. Everybody has a different way, but assuming, okay, they're not going to do this. Um, but I'm not, I want them to know who I am. Mm. I want them to know what I care about. I want them to know about some things I think. And also, they invited me here. So they right. want to know what's, what I have to share. They want to know what's in my head. They want to know what I can write. They want to know who I am. So go in with the confidence that they actually expect to hear something from you and learn something about you and try to have a conversation, right? Where it's like you feel out the vibe of like what makes them laugh or what makes them, you know, what engages them and what doesn't. Um, you steer away when you feel like you're losing them. You lean in when you feel like you've got them. Um, mm -hmm. But really massaging that relationship, it's a conversation. Mm -hmm. Like when you meet a, whether you meet people in the dog park or at your kid's school or, or at a bar or wherever else, you have all had opportunities where you have those conversations that just kind of like take off on their own. Mm -hmm. and connect. That's what you're trying to achieve, a conversation that takes off. Yeah. Um, and just another thought that sometimes comes up in our conversations and has over the years, just this kind of simple thought of you're bringing a gift. Yeah. You're, you're bringing a gift. You're just walking in there with this lovely, beautiful little gift. And if they if they don't know how to use the gift, you still have your gift and mm -hmm. it's fine. Um, but it's just lovely. Like they, you have something they want, mm -hmm. you know. Um, yeah. And so it's sort of a nice it's a nice way to think about it. You know, yeah. what's funny. I don't even okay. remember the original question. Yeah. I don't know what the original question was, but uh, <laughs> we naturally went into pitching, which is perfect. So. Oh, good. Okay, yeah. I was thinking, what was your original question? Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm a big fan of the it's it, you're bringing them a gift, and it's like, oh, you don't want this? Well, I'm gonna go over here. They might want it. Who knows? You don't know who's gonna want it, and it only takes one yes and. Uh, I mean, they're all the stories that we all know that, you know, Harry Potter and, you know, Stranger Things and all the things have been pitched a million times. But like, that's not weird. That's the norm that you take this thing out to like 100 people. 
Um, mm -hmm. I think people, they're like, take three meetings and they're like, they didn't buy it. And I was like, you thought they were going to like Venmo you like a million dollars in the, like in, during the meeting, like, give me a break, you know? Yeah. Oh well, yeah. What's your handle? The quickest so. way for me to want to live in a wigwam in the middle <laughs> of Siberia is for somebody to pitch twice and be like, well, nobody likes my pitch. What's wrong with them? Mm. And it's mm -hmm. like, Oh goodness. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's going to be a, it's going to be a journey. So, but I just have to also shout out Lynn who's in the comments who says she's really struggling with pitching. This is a free event. So kudos to you for being here. Yeah. Um, and yeah. and doing it. so many people say, I don't scared. I'm nervous. I'm doing, and then they don't do anything about no. it. And they just kind of like banging their head against the wall. So, um, so kudos for you for like being nervous and then being here and taking, you know, that shows mm -hmm. that you actually care. Oh, do we have another? I have a tiny revelation. Okay, you know you do drafts of your scripts. That's what mm -hmm. pitching is. You're doing drafts of your pitching in a way. Oh, yeah. You do it that way. Like you oh, just yeah. have to keep doing it over and over again. And who cares? Like don't be like I know. I know. I'm an I'm a sort of I'm an ambivert. You know. I like I like <laughs> being around people. And and I was an actor. And so all the hand gesturing and all that. I know right. it's hard for people. I know it really is. Um, but you just have to say fuck it. Yeah. Right. Especially when you're my age. Like. Who cares, man? I've been embarrassed so many times in my life. I'm, like, I'm dead inside, you know? Yeah. Just, yeah. Just, just, just You're just an go. empty shell. I'm an empty shell. Lisa, I've seen you out. You're just definitely not dead sock. inside. Um, <laughs> definitely not dead inside. But you, you also have to, when you're pitching too, like, yeah. you could go in and give the best pitch. And you're like, oh, my God, I feel so free. I feel so alive. The butterflies are chirping. The rainbows are forming. And these are the execs looking back at you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Or uh, in the olden days. Yeah, looking at their phone. Just like, on their you, phones. You can't. Eating you lunch. Can't, eating lunch. Like, you know, you have to know that, like, you just have to, you don't think about them so much. Like, think, just be, go in and know what you're doing. Because you never, that, that exec who's mad, might be, that might be their last day there and they could care less. And now they're Dude. going to watch date. And like, oh, you know, the last time I was at Netflix, I heard this pitch that was really cool. Let me talk to that person. So you never know. Um, but just come in and. and do your best. I would also add. Sorry, go ahead. You. No, I'm not it's asking a real you. Quick one. The, pra the, the writing and the practicing, uh, uh, practicing. I was just going to say, um, find a safe person to whom, mm -hmm. with whom you can practice telling the story of your story um, and, or, or two or three ideally so that you don't, so that they can sound fresh to somebody um, more than once. Um, but get comfortable saying it out loud to a person. Brilliant. Yeah, that's critical. So for those watching tonight who have no experience of pitching or are feeling nervous or just feel like they'd love a bit of help with the actual kind of structure, as, as much as we absolutely cherish what, you, what you've been saying about connecting and relationship, that being most important, so that they can feel confident. Joey, Adib, Nitsa, Elizabeth, have you got any tips on like, how should they begin? If, if you get to a point in conversation where they're like, so tell me about your story. Could you give us a little bit of advice? Because you guys are so good at it. What, how can they structure that pitch so that they can feel confident knowing they know like how they're going to run yeah. it? Well, I would say if you get, if you're like, it depends on the, like the situation. Like if you're at a right. bar and somebody's just telling me about your story, if you go into an eight minute pitch, they're going to be like, where the heck is the exit? But yeah. I'm, I'm, this is more going to be like, a, my advice to be more for like, you go into a room and they know you're going to pitch. Let's so like 10 minutes mm -hmm. or whatever. I would always start with a little antidote about who you are as to begin. This is after like the, how are you good? Tell me mm -hmm. about, did you find parking? Okay. Whatever. Yeah. Um, talk about a little bit about yourself, about what connects you to the story. Um, always start with the genre and format. This is under this assumption they don't know anything about the story. Um, a lot of times writers yeah. will jump into the plot. Yep. And the exact, like, wait, it sounds like a comedy, but I'm afraid to laugh because if it's not a comedy, what if I insult them? Yep. So do that. Tonal comps, it's this meets this. The logline of the pilot or, or sorry, the logline of the series or the logline of the feature, where it takes place. Um, if it's a feature, talk about the main plot points. It's not, and then this happens, and this happens, and this happens. Really yeah. hit hard about what the, who the main character is, what the inciting incident is, what the break into act two is, and so on and so forth. For TV, you want to give um, a list of characters, talk about the pilot, and then definitely talk about the series overview um, so they know that it has legs. For either one, if it's a comedy, talk about what's the funniest moment in the pilot or the funniest moment in act one. You don't want to finish a pitch and they say... Oh, great. You said it's a comedy, but where's the humor? Tell me like some of the funniest parts that should be peppered into your story. So it shows them how you could 
write comedy or how, how you could write horror, how you could write drama. Um, and then for at the end, this is like the super, <laughs> he's the quickest thing of all time. Um, at the end, um, give an ease out of your pitch. So it's not just an Adip and Elizabeth ride off into the sunset and then you and the executive have a five second staring contest where the exec's like, oh, are you done with your pitch? And you're like, yeah, that's my pitch. Yeah, that's that's yeah. the worst. Yeah, like and like and again, I wrote this story because of X Y Z, and that's my pitch. Or and mm -hmm. that's that's the story I came in to tell you today. Um, so the execs are wrapping their head around yeah. um, the questions and stuff because they don't want to interrupt you if you're like doing a, a a pause for drama, and then you're like, and then all the shit hit the yeah. fan, and you know, the they need that. Um, you have to land the plane, basically, is is how I put it, and it's like it's always a little bumpy. Because it's awkward and Indeed. all that. But... No, I'm afraid of flying. You have two planes in one sentence. How dare you? I'm doing this on purpose. <laughs> uh... can, I, can I make a really anal comment? So I'm yeah. obsessed with log lines. I have an obsession with log lines. And I think log lines are really important. And the, because not only do they, they are, they're a communication device, a really fast communication device, um, but they're important for you too, because they make you figure out the who, what, why, where, when, right? Exactly. They really, they're really helpful. Um, one thing I've noticed, though, is that sometimes when people get in, get their pitching and they say a log line, they've said it so many times that they're just, it, speaking of dead inside, it become, yeah. comes out really like, eh, oh, eh, oh, eh. Yeah. Um, that's my robot. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and, it's, and so just be careful with your, you know, reciting your log lines. Like, mm, you know, get some, body, get some body movement in there when you say it so that it's not dead. Yeah. I try not to say like, and here's my log line. I try to like take the anecdote and then bring, you know, and I, you know, this is this kind of, you know, the format and, the, and it's in the tone of this. And uh, it's about this character who's doing this. And then you just like ease them through it instead of like, you know, on the precipice of adulthood, <laughs> you know, all that when shit. a like woman the... finds her husband. Yeah. <laughs> right. I mean, it doesn't, oh, it works on the page, but in the, in the right. room, it's right. weird. Yeah, yeah, you have to make you it know. more conversational. Yeah. And, and the truth is when you're pitching, it's going to happen more than once that you're pitching and then halfway through the pitch, your soul has left your body. Totally. And you're like, what the heck am I saying? My mouth is moving, but I don't know what I'm saying anymore. Check back in because you're, I mean, it's going to happen. Check back in when you remember the last time you were talking and talk about the emotionality about the character at that moment. If you're going mm. off on a tangent, most likely the exec's like, wait, what's going where, on? Yeah. Um, where am I in the story? So your your main character kind of with uh, using elizabeth had a great metaphor before about snow my metaphor mm -hmm. is i have social anxiety so when i go to a party i always have to bring somebody and wherever that person is at the party i'm always focused on them because that's my <laughs> safety blanket that's where i'm going to go it's the same thing with your pitch your main character is the safety blanket is the anchor so like you mm -hmm. have to make sure that you pepper your main your your pitch with the main characters, even just the name over and over again. Yes. Now, like he does this and she does this. Exactly. Like, wait, who? Um, so the main character is always in the forefront of their yeah. mind. Yeah. I love that so much. Yeah. I love that so much. Thank you for that. Social anxiety. It pays off. I <laughs> I always tell. I think that this is something that I see a lot of at um, Roadmap and elsewhere. People, um, they, how do I put it? Um, Shit, my brain went blank. Uh, I had COVID two years ago, and I still say, have the say brain the character's name. Two years ago, no, name. you you can never talk about your main character enough in a pitch. Yeah, there's no pl place where the the producers like enough about your protagonist. Like that's the whole <laughs> fucking job. And it's like yeah. yes, if the world is confusing and you you haven't laid that out properly, so the context of the character doesn't make any sense. That's one thing, but like. You can talk about Nietzsche the whole time and like maybe you leave her for five minutes and then you come back. And but it, I think people don't talk enough about who the main character is, what they want and what's in their way. Like those are the things that are always missing. Great. And I just if that note? I just yeah, yeah, no, love, Joey, go. I just love everybody here. I just, <laughs> everybody, I'm like, I just love everybody. And Peter <laughs> also, also asked you, are most pitches version? Ver uh, what am I trying to say? Are most pitches virtually these days? And I would say, yeah, for the most part, yeah. they're virtual, yeah. which is amazing. Yeah. You never have to leave your house. Dude, Incredible. best. Yeah, it's awesome. So have the Zoom, have the notes around your computer. Don't read, don't have a, a Word document up yeah. and read off the piece of paper because they'll see your eyes going back and forth. 
and it's very hypnotic mm-hmm. and they start falling asleep or if they have yeah. glasses on they see it and they're like i can see yeah. it <laughs> you have that's like my the, favorite yeah i'm like you're not true you're not fooling anybody we see yeah. you know the thing but so have no you know have notes around your computer um make sure you have like a kind of like a, a zoom background that people are not good i kind of like like when you have a little pop of something behind you it shows like the human self and it kind of is, shows like the person's human or whatever um so yeah that's kind of that's, most things are virtual now that, i was gonna say that the great thing about zoom is you have instant icebreakers if you just notice what's behind the person you're talking to yeah and so that's why i mean it happened earlier right i mean they asked me about salacious crumb right. and i was like boom we're off to the race like it's he's not there just because i like having them there i just put Depending on the meeting, I'll put this sounds psychotic, but I'll put different things in the back. So, yeah, I guess a, I've noticed your background has changed a few it, times. It changes. Yeah. So, if I'm pitching a superhero movie that which I'm our superhero thing, which I'm doing right now, I have like Venom and I have, you know, I have like all these, these things in the background. Like, he's legit, he knows this world. If I'm pitching a comedy, a, a family comedy, I might have a picture of my kids. That's behind so, me. that's so brilliant. It's, it's basically you've got a visual marker of your brand. Yeah. Really good. Yeah, really but good. this is what you're not going to do. And I serve anybody here does this. I'm taking names who's here. You're not going to put a, a writing award. Behind oh, God. Or like <laughs> at this as writer on it. Because then it's like, oh, my God, this is a robot. This is somebody who just thinks. Yeah, you need to bring the human self into it. So no, no writing relating stuff. Yeah, my writer's guild, whatever document is like way over here and you can't see it. But I do see it on people's. Well, sometimes that I'm like, why? Why are you doing yeah. insecurity? I know. I know why, but it's like, don't. Please don't. Um, yeah, just like, I think it's I think it's easier to show who you are with the things that you love um, instead of having to talk about it. You know, you can just do the shortcut. Yeah. And then yeah. it takes the nerves out of the situation because you're talking about something you're comfortable with and and then you're like, okay, rapport is set. And and go like if you are invited to send your um, script to a company and then um, then you get a meeting, um, do you? What would you recommend? I don't know because it's slightly different in the UK and the US and different territories. What should people send when they send their script? Should they send a short pitch? before perhaps they get a meeting, when they get to sort of um, verbally pitch the project? Or is what would you recommend in terms of how stuff is presented? You mean like companion materials, like a lookbook or, or something yeah, like that? Yeah, and is that just, would that normally go before they get a kind of um, virtual pitch meeting? How does Honestly, it work? In- I would say less is more. Less is oh, more. Yeah. The more you give yeah. them, the more they have an opportunity to pass on something. Yep. So yep. it's good. just if they don't ask for anything, don't suggest anything. Just right. Go in and be like, here I am. Here's my story. If you're like, here's every, here's my Bible. Here's my lookbook. And then they're like, well, in episode two in season four, you wrote this. And I hate that idea. I can't look past it. It's a pass. Then it's like you less is more, I would say. Yeah. Really interesting. That's great advice. I so, want to jump in. Oh, yeah, go for it. Sorry, Rosa. I cut you. I keep cutting you off. Um, right. I just wanted to add, um, we are hearing from our writers that um, in the U.S. these days, there's actually less script reading and it happens later than it used to yeah. be. Yeah. Um, yeah. Execs don't want to read very much. Uh-huh. Um, so do, the one thing I would have be, I would have prepared in case you're asked for it, uh, you don't have to volunteer it, but wait till you're asked for it, that is some kind of lookbook that is sort of a visual representation of the story you intend to tell. And it has some text that there are some key components. You can look them up online. They're not hard to find. There's some key components that you want to have in the text. But really, it's it's meant to be easy reading, so less text is better. <laughs> and it's meant to sort of give them a... a, a, a uh, uh, an idea of what it would be. I also wanted to say in connection with that, um, when you're speaking, I'm, I was looking at the uh, comments and questions in the comments. Um, the question about, can you say fuck it in a pitch or how, and this goes back to the US UK thing. The bigger issue is this, before you go to a pitch, do your research on the person you're talking to. Mm-hmm. You really do know who you're talking to maybe i mean without being a, a sort of 
criminal stalker, um, <coughs> know enough that you can adjust your the tone of your pitch um, yeah. appropriately. Like if you're meeting with, um, let's say, a faith-based production company, you might right. not say fuck it. Um, if you're meeting with Hollywood, it's probably fine. I don't yeah. know how, say, UK producers and companies fall and execs fall. Um, it may be less common there to be throwing those words out. It may be in a European market. We found with our European writers, um, the swear words mean nothing. And they're just peppered in like normal language. Yeah. Um, so I think knowing your audience and and just making a, a an informed guess at what's appropriate is a good idea. I think Lynn might have even been talking about saying fuck it at the beginning of the pitch, being like, fuck it, I'm just going to do it. I'm nervous. <laughs> I think maybe that's what she was talking about, too. I wouldn't suggest doing that. Um, but uh, Fuck it, here we go. It's like, whoa. Look oh, no, no, anyway. what I just said. Look, I've yeah. never done this. But Hold Elizabeth, on. So right. You have to research who you're meeting. If you go in and the execs like, and ask, starts asking you questions or starts talking about themselves, and it's clear that you you from their point of view that you came in and have no idea yeah. who they are it's not going to make them feel good about themselves it's going to feel like oh this is just a stock person that's coming in with a stock pitch with a stock before and after mm -hmm. and there's no human there's no human connection mm -hmm. um rita also asks how important is a strong tv bible before sending your materials out it's very important I, again i wouldn't suggest giving it out if it's not asked for but the, what you don't want is somebody hears your pitch and like great before i read the script can i read the bible and you're like oh shoot i don't have one let me quickly write one up and then two weeks go by and you send it and the exec's like wait who are you again <laughs> so um you, you want to have that yeah. is sending the bible like because in the WGA, like we have a whole thing about how we view a, a pitch Bible is a document that you're supposed to get money for. And it's not a leave behind. And so that's the thing we bump into all the time. It's like, it's better to just like verbally pitch it. And then if they want to have more, like they can talk to you about it and then you can send the script or what have you. But how does that work? Like, and pitch Bible versus pitch deck and all that stuff. Those are things that get confusing for everybody. Right. I mean, I think that also what I've seen, I've seen just really sort of bullet pointed um, epi episode sort of log lines, you know, it's almost uh, yeah. like a series of log lines. Or, yeah. yeah. It's not really a, a, a Bible. It's not a Bible. It's a lot Bible. of work. Yeah. No. And also yeah. I always think that how can you write a pilot if you don't know what the season is? I mean, mm -hmm. although, okay, well, that's another conversation, <laughs> but, but a sort of, or general, general, general arc maybe yeah, of yeah. the characters, because that you've got to lay the seeds for that in your pilot. Mm -hmm. So that's another reason why you should have that in your back pocket anyway. Sorry, I'm going to be quiet. I mean, I always have them like in some form because it, it, but I don't, I think people get so caught up on the Bible that they're not, they can't write a damn script. So it's like, you, you have to be able to write the script. You know, like you could write a great Bible, I guess, but that's not going to get my, you across finish line. My experience is that if an exec hears your pitch and asks for the Bible only, it's almost like a thank you, but no thank you. Yeah. So a little like embarrassed not to ask for something. But if they ask for the Bible and not the script, it's just like, I don't know, they should ask for the script. Anything yeah. else is whatever. But yeah. Um, yeah. And Jim says, my background is a bookcase where my books are prominent. Yes, showcase those books. It worked once as a conversation starter. Yeah, all that stuff is really cool. The, um, I had a meeting. I had a fun meeting with some guys. And they were like, the first thing they said is, count the guitars. And then they were like counting all the guitars in the background of people. Because it was like such a thing that everyone, including me, does. And I was like, oh, no. And they're like, no, it's fine. It's fine. It's cool. Um, they're, they're from Pixar. So they're, you know, they're light and it, it's kind of to the tone, like they're light, but irreverent and, and they sort of carry that with them and, you know, they could drop the F-bomb and it'd be fine, you know? So I think, I think it'd be great to ask if anyone has any more questions for the panel, what do you think? Cause I think you guys have just covered so much rich information. Fred. Do you have anything else you want to add to, on the whole? Pitching, um, presentation. I think, I think we've been given so much in what you've already said. I think, I think it would be great to like see if it's open up to the floor and see if there's any more questions. Well, one, the last thing I'll say is, you know, just kind of Lynn being, just kind of, it just resonates like somebody being nervous to pitch, and everybody is nervous 
to pitch. It's a nervous thing. Um, mm -hmm. It's your, your everything that you worked on for years or however, however long, um, and you're going in to put your heart on your sleeve. Um, but it's good to have nerves. It's good to have nerves because it brings the energy into it. Um, mm -hmm. You want to have the energy. And if you're going into like the Netflixes or the Lionsgate or something, of course, they're going to understand that you have nerves. If you go in and you're a little nervous, they're not going to be like, well, trap door, this person's out. Um, but you have to like, the more you have to really not practice to the point that it's like rehearsed, that you under, you know where every word is. Because if the exec does interrupt you in the middle of a pitch to ask you a question, you might be a little thrown off. She's like, okay, wait, I was lying to you, <laughs> page three. Um, but the more you do it, the more like kind of in the flow. And the more you do it and the more rejections you get, the more you'll realize about the expectations. So you're like, okay, the chances are that Lionsgate's not gonna pick up my film, but I wanna you know build a rapport. Great. And we have got here another question. How long is the ideal pitch? Um, three minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes? I would say like five, five, eight minutes. It depends though. It doesn't it depend on the meeting because yeah, true. Because if they're like you're develop like I'm I'm developing something, and so when I come in, when I came into pitch, I had a 20 minute pitch because I'm telling them how much I know about their underlying material and how I'm going to adapt it. And all that kind of takes time. And, um, but if it's like a, I don't know, like a general and you're just like soft pitching it, like um, two minutes. Yeah. Right. And what if someone says to you after you do your 10 minute, whatever pitch, they say, yeah. what else you got? Then you want to, you yeah. want to have something short in your pocket for right. your other projects. So, yeah, totally. you know, you've got to be able to say, Oh, you know, I have this thing and blah, 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 mm -hmm. two, three minutes or. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Totally agreed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it, the the type of meeting will dictate how long I think that your pitch is going to be. Um, but nothing should go over twenty minutes now, right? Over Zoom, like people can't handle twenty more than twenty thirty minutes. I love yeah. what Joe was saying about um, how to handle fear and just to sort of because you know having that energy. You know, and, and it's so important in any in any in any pitch in any conversation, um, and I, I think that's going to be super helpful to people watching. That you know, just to see it that, as a way that they can just stay on their toes, bring some, bring some energy. And um, I was actually one of my questions was, what should we not do in a pitch? What would be an absolute no no? What's going to bore you? What's what's the worst? Um, so I guess this is my question. What is <laughs> the worst? What is the worst pitch that you've you've had, and um, how could you translate that into sort of feedback for people in terms of what is what should we not do, not oh to not create fear, but just to sort of um, you know what 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 excites you in a pitch, and what what kind of bores you, I guess. I'll tell you what bores me, but I please please note everybody, I am not somebody that people pitch to, but I think just as a general <laughs> listener, as a sort of a human listener. <laughs> I think when I hear writers get into the tiny details of their story's plot, I lose. I get lost. Yeah. Um, I don't I don't want to know what happens scene by scene in a verbal pitch. I want like Joey and Adip said, I want to see the person moving through the party. Um and what and 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 why I'm interested in that person and what's going to happen at the end of that night. Um, that's for me. Uh, you go first, Steve. No, 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 you go ahead. I'm, I'm thinking. I would say one thing that gets my goat is when, look, execs, they have, uh, yeah, what should I say? The execs, they sometimes they're a little scared to open their door to writers that they don't, they don't know. It just takes one lunatic writer, lunatic yeah. person, to F with them and to be like, whoop, I'm never opening my door again. So you have to go in not being like, do you want to read my script? How do I, how do I send you my script? How do I do you, how do I keep in touch with you? Oh, the pitch is done. Where should I send my script? Or you don't want my script? How dare you not want my script? So don't push it. Don't overdo it and be like, how do I get you my, how do I get the script to you? And like, whatever, they'll let you know if they want to read your script. Yeah. And also like the follow up too, if they do read, if they do request your script, give them like four business weeks and then email them like, Hey, just want to see if you had a chance, just wanted to see if you had a chance to read my script. And that is the only time you're going to follow up. 
after that, you could keep in touch with other things and say, hey, I saw you were in Deadline or I saw your right. movie just came out. That's amazing. Congratulations. Or your client's right. movie just came out, whatever. Um, because it's not about the script. It's about building fans. That is true. fantastic advice. Brilliant. Um, the thing Go. I hate, it's it's part of what Joey said. It's like the desperation. Like you, you can just smell it over zoom and it's like oh no not one of these it makes you feel sad and you don't want to feel sad when you're like hearing a pitch unless that's intentional um i noticed that a lot of more confident slash arrogant writers will sort of shit on another project and like mine's gonna be better because this and i'm like you're a psycho don't ever do don't ever criticize anything that anyone's ever done you can have a critique where it's like in the way that they did this in, in Goodfellas, like I'm going to do it this way because of this. It's not like they mm -hmm. suck and I'm awesome. And, you know, but you get that a lot with like really new screenwriters who've maybe written one screenplay. Like you will get that kind of like, they don't know what they don't know. And uh, just be like humble and, and do the work. Like Nitsa said, like just work on the craft, but damn defensive, boring, uh, desperate and arrogant or just like the worst. I think, you know, on a very general note, it's really good to have a life. Right? Yeah. Outside you know, of this. Yeah. Make sure that you, you know, that you're not just, your eggs aren't all in one basket because that yeah. way, before you go in, you can just go, okay. this is just a moment, you yeah. know? And then when yeah. you leave, you can say, that was a moment. And then that is on. such, that is so great. Even just, that is so great. Cause if you just go out, if you leave a pitch and all you think about is how much you effed up, it's going to eat away at you and your confidence is going to reflect maybe in other, in other ways. So yep. go out after you do a pitch, meet a friend, have a coffee, have spaghetti and just kind of laugh about it. And cause you never know what's going on in the exec's mind anyway. So yeah, I yeah. love that. Yes. And, and, and to that point, um, you can absolutely crush a pitch and you know you crushed it. The execs know you crushed it and you will not get the gig. So like that is not a reflection of your performance or your pitch. It's just their taste is different. The, the, the direction they want to go in on their writing assignment is the open writing assignment is different. It's not that you suck. And, you know, if you put it all out there, they're like, they're awesome. We're going to call them back when we have something else. I think it's, people just forget that. It's a long game and it's a numbers well, game. It is, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just try to get stuff on the board, I guess. Fantastic advice. Um, we have a couple more questions that I um Rita says I've finished my script, but I've been stuck on the Bible. Oh, sorry, that so it's awesome to know. So brilliant. Okay, so Rita, don't worry about writing like a really long Bible. That's that's great. Um, how and then Jim has said, how important is a pitch book lookbook for a feature film? I thought they were more important for TV. Oh. I would say it's really not that much. I mean, I think it's more for like animation, maybe sci-fi. If it's very world building, but it's v I've never ever ever had somebody be like, oh, that's pitch like into the bedroom or something like i'm very interested about the lookbook for that because it's just it, there's really isn't anything um so i don't think it's more for like stuff that requires very heavy visuals i think yeah tv or features really I, I will say that i've seen these gorgeous like for dramas or indies i've seen people put together not endless i'm always encouraging you know <laughs> i've seen people put together some really nice images and some yeah. you know a couple of words just to it can be handy. And and sometimes yep. it's just handy from the point of view of you do it for yourself almost. Right. You know, like yeah. get that, get that, get that. Um, what is that thing called? Pin? What's it called? Pinterest. 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 Like oh, put, Pinterest your, board, put yeah. your board, your board oh, together. Yeah. It is, wow. Think of it like a Pinterest right. board. And, and actually I, I would beg to differ with Joey who does uh, for sure know the industry a lot better than I do. I just, sit in my little corner with scripts, but um, <laughs> get a life. <laughs> um, the people I do know, I do feel like um, a lookbook, even for a feature um, is a good idea. I think increasingly people know that that's an option and uh, like to ask for it before they, they take a full dive into reading a hundred pages. Um, and, and as Nita said, it's useful for you, but then you also, you have it, whether you think of it as a calling card or as a teaser 
or as a something. Um, and you can put that together on your own. You don't need a director. You don't need to be a director. Um, I, I just think it's an excellent document to have um, if you can. Um, for some people who don't know how to take pictures or cut and paste, that's me, um, <laughs> maybe not so different, not so easy. Um, but uh, for those of you who can, I, I would recommend it. And you can always hire someone to do your decks for you. Um, and cheap. Very cheap. Like if you go on Fiverr, you can find someone in, in Hungary who will do it for, you know, $8 overnight. And it's like you send it and then you wake up to a pitch deck. And um, that's the world we live in now. I, I like to pay uh, like fair things and I also tip, but like other people are like $2, here's my pitch deck, you know, but they're just cranking them out. You know, they have the template and, and, you know, yeah. And you will have your template when you start pitching a lot, you'll have like what format works for you and where the, what fonts you like and all that. Yeah. It's, it's, it's always, I think, when you're reading any script, it's always wonderful, even if you just get, like, two pages of visuals or something, because it gives you, even if it's a writer, for me, anyway, my opinion, if it's a writer or a director, it just gives you that visual feel of an extension of the voice, really, um, because it's, it's words on a page, but it's also emotion, feeling, music, poetry, you know. So it, if it works for you, I think it's 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 really helpful even if you don't actually send it. So mm -hmm. um, Lisa says, the last time I went to a pitch fest last month, my first question to the execs was, what brought you here? What are you looking for? Which is great. So kind of, yeah, brilliant. My um, boss to... made me, um, I don't know, the mandate changed last night. That's the oh, thing. Like, <laughs> my boss. If it's a it's, yeah. If it's a pitch fest, you might be pitching an intern. Like, be careful about who you're pitching at a pitch fest. Like, right. you know, the, and so that therefore it's a waste of your time yeah. and theirs. Uh, yeah. But but it's pra but it's a good opportunity. It's good to practice. practice. Yeah. And yeah. sometimes you'll get a smart intern, and you'll get something out of it. And you can have okay. fun. Can yeah. Have yeah. You can try, try shit out. But it's like Never. adjust your expectations, you know, because. It, that I think that helps. Like pitch fests are so desperate. It's just one big desperation machine often. So it's like, just get out of that, you know, out of that mode and just kind of have a good time and tell your story. I'm actually like, I'm not really, I'm kind of against saying, what are you looking for? Like right yeah. on the, because they're going to respond with, especially in that circumstance, yeah. what are you, whatever you're prepared to pitch, whatever you're most yeah. excited about. What are you about. working on? What are you working yeah. on? So it's better like you go in and show that you could show you could storytell and you could show who you are as a writer and be excited with what you're pitching versus being like, hey, let me just look at my on my trench coat and see what's right for you. Um, I think it's better to be like, here's oh, here's what I'm really excited about. Here's my pitch. So they feel the excitement and passion. Yeah, great. Totally. And then if they passion. say, what else have you got? You can yeah. pick out something yeah. else. And, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure we have time, Rosalind, for um, an intro uh, of, of speaking of pitch vests, yeah. um, of how you're, of what Film Market Hub yeah. and pitch and how it works technically. Super. So I'm going to just, yeah, I'm just going to, so anyone who's watching and is interested in our pitch box events, you have until the 17th of August. To, uh, to submit your project. I'm gonna get you really excited by, right now by just telling you some of the companies who are confirmed and they are attending. We have got the most crazy lineup for our first US pitch box. I'm so excited, I wish I could apply. It's amazing. You've got anonymous content, Blumhouse, Bonded Media Capital, Bronze Studios, Film Nation International, HBO Max, NBC Universal International Studios, Silver Reel, and Universal Pictures. We are going to be selecting seven. Very obscure. I know. It's really <laughs> And the thing is, you get, so how it works is if you're selected, you get to pitch to all those companies at one event. How often in your Whoa. life, even with an amazing agent, are you going to get to pitch and talk and build relationship, what we've been talking about with those companies in one day? It's an amazing opportunity. And on top of that, our, our Got these great partners here with us tonight, but we've also sponsored by Final Draft, who so all the finest will get Final Draft software. In addition, 
Um, the full service media company Buffalo 8 will award, and I have to read this because it's such a big amount of money, sorry, will award one film project and one TV project with professional executive producer services valued at $7,950 each. So that is, that's epic. It's really cool. So wow. this is our event. Um, if you want more information about it, I think the best thing is that you go online to the Film Market Hub website, www.filmmarket.hub, go to the cool section, click on US Online Pitch Box, and you will get all the information about the event and how to submit. If you have any questions about the submission process, you can check out our other YouTube video where we have a whole little video specifically about how to submit your project and answering questions about this one specific event or you can email us at filmbox at filmmarkethub.com. So um, do check us out. We have lots of interesting events and calls and partnerships and other things that you can find, which I'll leave it to you to explore. But that's our event, and we're super excited about it. It's the first US event, so do check us out. And, and if you've got something ready to go, go for it. Or it's, if you're nearly there, use this as a deadline yeah. to finish that and just submit it and give it a go. I mean, it's great to have deadlines. And we would talk yeah. about this a deep another time. You know, you've got a bit of time. So if something's nearly there, you know, go for it. You've push. got some time yeah. there. Yeah, push so through. Any, yeah, and I think that's it. I, I think everything else you'll find out on, on the marketplace. I think I think I just want to thank and where we've been going for, a, wow, an hour and a half. So um, to our panel this evening, you have just been incredible. I've learned so much. I'm going to go back and listen to this tomorrow and make notes because I've been <laughs> watching you. So, but you have given us. By the way, she's going to listen to it tomorrow at the beaches of like, where are you? Ibiza. Ibiza or well, where I'm, are you, where are you I'm currently in Menorca for two weeks. So um, I'm, ah, I'm, yeah. I'm so jealous. <laughs> Never talk to her about where she is. <laughs> it will always make you feel bad. <laughs> but um, yeah, you can. Um, uh, yeah, email us if you have any questions, and we'll have this. We'll have this recording um, available. If this all this wonderful information, so we'll put it out on our networks. We'll give it to Romap; they can put it out if they want, and and also to the Writers Lab, so you can share with your networks. Because there's so much in this. Um, I think just in these conversations, there's been so many gems. So thank you so much for your time and for partnering with our event. We love you guys. We want to keep working with you. And yeah, and just, yeah, we're all doing, we're all, you know, we're all staying basically for talent and, and making talent visible and, and helping people further along in their storytelling and careers. So cool. Nice. Yeah. Bye. Bye, Nisa and Elizabeth. Good to see you. I yeah. wish I could go to a party with you guys. We will do it. We will in New York. Oh, yeah, I can be. I can be New York. Your anxiety touchstone. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, we got to make it. York. We'll make and it happen. All Rosalind, right. Please. Uh, uh, behind the scenes at Film Market Hub is a wonderful team making this yeah. happen. My God, yeah. it's been so smooth. So thank you, Catalina, sure. and everybody else. Yeah. Absolutely, agree. and it's super yeah. late in Spain. So, yeah, thank you to all the, our wonderful tech team who put on all these yeah. amazing this events. So, yeah, awesome. brilliant. Thanks for brilliant. having us. Brilliant. All right. Bye. <laughs>